Hello, I'm Liz Lumley of Finextra, and today we're speaking about Target 2 Securities. And joining me from this discussion are four people from Deutsche Bank. So let me introduce them. It's Andrew Rand. Hello. And Angus Fletcher. Hi. Andre Fafel. Hello. And Graham Ray. Thank good you very afternoon, much. Liz. Very good. So I think, you know, I think one of the first questions we're going to talk about, um, and I've had a few people say this to me over the past few weeks, is um, why should people care about Target 2 securities? Or do you want to start us off on this? I think it's going to benefit um, every, every securities player uh, in Europe in one form or another. And whether it benefits or impacts, I think, is probably the more the, 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 the most important element to, to add. It, it's, it's mandatory market change. It's happening. It's 2015 when it's going to happen. And every securities player, whether they be an investment manager uh, down at one end of the, um, the, the settlement chain, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a broker dealer or a global custodian or a sub custodian or a central securities depository, every player is going to be impacted in one way. It's such a diverse program that the infrastructure is developing and it's not an isolated program with so many other regulatory changes that are occurring in our industry that for participants in the securities business, how they understand Target 2 for securities and the opportunities that it arises for clients to obtain benefits or market participants to obtain benefits, whether that be you know, headline benefits like the cross-border settlement costs reduction or whether it be some of the ancillary benefits that maybe are integrated into the program, i.e. like looking at the collateral opportunities that arise or looking at the way to maximise and, uh, and benefit from liquidity efficiencies is so key and important and actually is on the horizon in a very short period of time to occur from, from 2015. Mm, but you mentioned you know, it's important that every player looks at the benefits, but yeah. is the wider market kind of ignoring Target 2 securities right at the moment or do you get that feeling? The reality is from earlier this year, the framework agreement was signed by the central securities depositories. This is now a reality. It is going to happen. Are there questions on the end timings for all of the different waves of when this will come in? Absolutely. Uh, but the reality is, is it's not a question of um, if anymore. It's a question of when. And it's very important with such a fundamental change to the market that people get engaged now, uh, that people should really have already been engaged um, and start to work through those both, uh, you know, all sorts of impacts, whether they be perceived to be negative impacts or positive impacts um, to the business model, because the business model will change. That's, there's no question. Mm -hmm. So I guess here's the next question is, is Deutsche Bank ready? Well, we've invested uh, around 30 millions of euros uh, in buildings and necessary infrastructure and expertise mm -hmm. uh, to be a center of T2S excellence. Um, we settle tens of millions of transactions a year in the euro area. So T2S is integral to our business uh, model. So yes, we are very much ready mm -hmm. and uh, we are very committed to T2S. Mm -hmm. Well, we've heard a lot of you know, positive thoughts, but I mean, does anyone have any reservations about Target 2 securities? So I think in terms of, do we have reservations about it, uh, it itself? No, I think the, the fact of the matter is, is it's happening. It's a ECB driven program. There is no question that the, the program is going to come in and it's going to change the way we do business. Uh, do we have questions still, open questions, about how T2S is fully going to operate, how the CSDs are going to, or central security depositories are going to interface into T2S, how we as direct participants uh, of T2S are going to be able to interact with the CSDs, their pricing structures, um, how the cost recovery process is fully going to work both the ECB level and central securities depository level. Absolutely, there are still questions out there. There are market specific attributes that are still being discussed at this stage um, among the, the various within the, uh, the different CSDs and, and different markets um, that still need to be thrashed through. And then there's the whole testing program of how we get from T2S really being a, a, a an internal ECB program to it being fully rolled out across Europe um, and, and how all the different participants are going to play their part in that testing program again is going to be critical and we're still 
needing details around uh, some of those, those, those key aspects. I, I think we have to assume that there will be some surprises along the way, and I think we just need to develop a product that is flexible enough to, to sort of go with the flow and, and um, move with, that, with those uh, changes in the market. I mean, especially with, when you to look at European harmonization, there are so many sort of disparate regulations that Europe's looking at right at the moment. The T2S is almost one of right. a whole ecosystem. That right, mm. so CSD regulation is clearly another vitally important element that needs to play a part um, a, 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 and is going to be a key part of, of both the framework potentially that the T2S uh, operates within and the, pl the key players of the central securities depositories and custodians uh, operate within both from a settlement harmonization piece. So you look at uh, a T plus two settlement regime across Europe, that's going to require um, you know, m most of the countries bar Germany to move from a T plus three, set T plus three settlement cycle to a T plus two settlement cycle uh, prior to T2S go live. Um, that's that's a, a significant undertaking that needs to be factored in as part of the planning for all players as they move towards uh, T2S, as mm. an example. So, I mean, what should firms be looking for in a T2S provider then? Most definitely a commitment to the, the markets that are engaged in T2S, because obviously it is a spectrum of markets that signed the framework agreement in 2012 and continue to uh, be announced as we've gone through 2013. Um, in that commitment, I think it's not just looking at the headline of what is T2S, how do you connect to T2S. It's looking to ensure in your business model from the partner that you uh, take the journey with that you actually do maximise, as I said before, many of the benefits. So you look at the way that your account structures are going to be operated in, in a Target 2 for Securities um, world. You know, is it on an account operator model where you're under a power of attorney outside? responsibility to, uh, to an agent bank, or is it still using the agent bank's infrastructure of accounts? It's looking at the central bank liquidity that's available and looking at that um, partner that you choose and how they are managing their own liquidity. And that's very paramount and in, in Target 2 for securities and again, maybe sit sometimes under the radar. And to complement that, I would say collateral. How can your partner consolidate collateral? Does their strategy towards dealing with Western Europe, maybe look to a centralization of a hub like Deutsche Bank has, where collateral consolidation will allow greater distribution, and then for clients, the ultimate benefits of Target 2 for securities. So that's great. Thank you very much, Andrew, Angus, Audrey, Graham. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.